Hey parents, Megan Pinchback coming to you to explain how we do homework here at Dyslexia On Demand. I'm going to start out by telling you that this is most specifically geared towards take flight homework because that makes up the majority of the therapists in our company. But I think that there are so many parts that are very pertinent to you BLS parents also. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by showing you a very, very handy um, piece of material that I would suggest that you have in your toolkit. And I went over that in an organizational video that I made a little bit earlier. And that is going to be your binder. So it's going to be a binder that has at least four tabs, since that's the majority of the amount of times um, and days that we do meet with therapists here in the, in the company. But that binder is also going to have a little clear front on it. And this piece of paper is provided to you in your Take Flight supplemental um, folder that I've also sent you when you started the company. So on it, the most things that you would ever have for homework are all listed on here. That's cursive, instant words, RAP, and reading for 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you know what it is that you have assigned for homework that day um, and what you need to review obviously with your child and where to find it and how to do it. So let's go ahead and I'll share the screen with you over to a sample lesson plan. So here's an example of a lesson plan that um, a student in our company has for this week. And if you look on the far right hand corner, you will see a column that says homework. So next to um, every item, every one of those items that I actually just mentioned, um, you will also have excuse me, you'll also have them listed here. And if the child has it assigned for homework, there will be an X next to it. Things like cursive are not always um, assigned for homework or RAP, in particular, if you've gotten to lesson 36 and above, and we go ahead and we move into A and B days. And at that time, a lot of times cursive will not be assigned, nor will RAP. That being said, sometimes on B days, um, therapists will still provide uh, review RAP passages. So don't assume 100% that if you are on a B day that there is no RAP. That's one of the little tactics that I liked to do with students. So let me go ahead and take you through what each one of these is going to look like. And the reason that I like having this on the front cover, because once it is completed, you can just check it off with a dry erase marker and the next day erase it and start all over again. This helps you to stay really super organized. And if you have organized your binder in the fashion that I suggested in the previous video, you should know exactly what pages you're working on that day. Because if it is Monday and you had cursive assigned, you'll just go to your Monday sheet and do your cursive. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and I am going to change the share again and walk you through what the completion of this homework specifically looks like. All right, so we're going to start out with an example of the cursive. So if you complete if your if your child had completed this for the day and I'm going to kind of roughly do this um, without a stylus so bear with me, but they would have, this looks really bad, and your therapist has a stylus, which makes this look much, much better, <laughs> just so that you know it does not look like this with your child. But your student would have completed this amount of cursive, and just so that you know, sometimes that is X'd out, and that is not um, an error, okay? Uh, the part that your child should do for homework is as many O's as possible, throughout these two lines. So as many O's as they can fill out. Again, remember, this is really bad. I'm doing this with my mouse. Your therapist has a stylus, which makes it look a lot better, okay? So this is what it would look like if you were doing cursive. And if you had completed that with your child, they would just check it off. 
The next thing listed is instant words. So let me show you what that looks like. Now on the, I'm gonna kind of toggle many times to different shares really quickly. We're gonna go back and we're gonna look at that, the assignment for the day that was provided by that therapist. So cursive was just done, now instant words. And if you look over at instant words here, the therapist is assigned columns, 51 through 60. So in the last video, I did show you how you get through that entire uh, Black Line Master book. Find that 51 through 60. It's only a couple pages. You print it out. And in theory, since it's Monday, we go in the binder to Monday. I see that that's where that O sheet is. But I've also stuck the columns there. Okay. So let's go and let's change the share again, and I will show you what it looks like when you do that with your child. Ah, are we on the right chair? Bear with me. Yes, we are. Okay, so, oh, so here we are, and today is Instant Words 51 through 60. Now, I recognize that if you look on this entire page, it has a top and a bottom section. Most likely your child did the top with their therapist. Um, you can choose to do the bottom. It really doesn't matter. What columns 51 through 60 is, it's 51, the, the fry words that are the most commonly found um, in the English language numbers 51 through 60. And they're all in just different order. So they're just mixed up. So it's the same thing at the bottom of the page. It's just those 10 words just presented in different order in columns. So what we're trying to do daily is mix up the presentation fashion because you can see the next day would be rows. So you pick as many of these as you'd want to do. I wouldn't suggest doing the entire page because that will exhaust your child. Pick either the top or the bottom and use your discretion as a parent um, and you know the stamina of your child um, and what else they were faced with that day in terms of how many columns you want to choose to do, okay? All right, next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to go back because we've done our instant words. I'll check that off. And we're going to go to RAP. Now, RAP can be a little bit confusing to parents. And so we're going to scroll down to where RAP would be. So um, what I suggest oftentimes to my therapist and what we are taught to do is that whatever sheet was used during the therapy session, they're supposed to put a check on the bottom of it so parents know which one to go back and review for homework. That being said, if you find that you don't have a check, I would suggest that you just pick one. It really doesn't matter, but you do know the general ability level of your child. Again, this is intended to be done, not at a frustrational level. So if these CVC words, consonant, vowel, consonant words are about at the level that would be acceptable, for, um, appropriate for your child, I'd suggest that. If you have a kiddo who is, you know, um, older, a little bit more progressed in their phonemic awareness, I would go ahead and pick the harder one, okay? But at the end of the day, it is all repetition of whatever the concept that was presented was. So let's go ahead and let's say that um, we did have a check and it was 11.2 that we were doing. This is the one that I'm going to do with your child. So, or you're going to do with your child. So let me explain to you what RAP is all about. So the whole idea behind it is that we're not taking the time to decode. We're trying to work on that rapid retrieval, autom rapid automatic retrieval processing of these words. So a lot of kid, kiddos uh, with dyslexia have issues with their working memory, their short-term memory, and we want to try to strengthen that as much as possible and help them to retrieve it as quickly as possible. So RAP is not about taking the time to allow your child to d a g dog every time. What we're hoping for is that we retrieve it, we bring it back really quickly. So let me show you what we do during therapy and what we'd like you to do at home. 
So you, the amount of the page that you choose to do is up to you. Again, just like I said, you know the stamina of your child and so on um, and how fast, but this is not intended to be a 30 minute um, process, all right? So what the therapist does during um, the lesson is that this first line she gives to your child and he or her, he or she repeats. So dog, and then the child says dog, mop, the child says mop, gob, hod, nod. You get the idea. So that was directly provided to your child. Now, just like with instant words, all of these are also the exact same combination. I mean, the exact same five words. They're just presented in a, in a different combination. And my apologies, because I'm just realizing what I, I forgot to tell you is that in therapy with the instant words, we are, that therapist is going to go ahead and have your child echo all of the words in column one. So nothing is a surprise in column two, three, four, and five. So my apologies, I forgot to mention that. All right, so back here, so remember the child echoes dog, mop, gob, hod, nod. We go down here to nod. This is where your child is working independently through this line at the bottom, hod. So we would hope that the child is saying nod, dog, hod, mop, gob. Now, if the child we find is laboring through it, nod, uh, not. You don't want to allow that much time. The idea is that if your child doesn't know that word within a couple seconds, you give it to him. You tell him nod. And then he, he or she echoes you nod. Okay. Obviously, if we are at the decoding stage of all of these words, you're not going to want to labor through the entire page, but you're going to want to kind of try to strengthen that retrieval because at some point to a certain degree, it's, it, we want it to stay at the surface and practice bringing it back at the surface. Okay. Just so that you understand how we're trying to review it. Okay. All right. The last thing that was R-A-P, and I'm gonna go ahead and erase these really quickly. The last thing that you're gonna work on, the last two things are review your read naturally and read for 20 minutes. Now, again, let me just remind you that homework is completely voluntary um, in Dyslexia On Demand or Take Flight. That being said, it is strongly suggested because we see very large differences in the amount of progress. The more exposures that a dyslexic child has, the more success, the more imprint, the more um, and faster we're creating those new neural pathways. So remember that if this, we don't want this to be a hour long endeavor, but let's try to adapt it to your home needs and just a way that you're gonna make it happen every day. And if that means only doing one section of RAP, that's what it means. But doing something is better than doing nothing because just when it's fresh, bringing it back. Do I care if it's done immediately after the session or later on that evening? I don't, um, but there's probably something to be said with giving it a little bit of break and then going back and doing it. So. Now um, let's let's pretend that this was the read naturally passage. Your child is going to be reading this passage many times uh, with throughout the week. That's the intention of what uh, this passage is. This read naturally passage is this fluency passage, repeated reading. So with that, they will progress. They will get faster. So. Your child has already read this passage with a therapist um, and your job is exclusively to have them just read this passage to you, okay? So um, it doesn't matter the pacing and so on. You don't need to, if a child is struggling with a word, what um, us teachers and therapists generally do, we count three full seconds before we give it, give it to them because processing speeds are different. Keep that in mind with your child. So if your child is having trouble with the word must, for example, um, or let's say people, because that doesn't necessarily follow that, that um, any huge phonetic principles they probably learned at this point that might just be a memorizer. So the child's P, one, one thousand. 
two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Give them a good amount of time to be able to retrieve it or to be able to decode it and then help them people and then have them echo you people. Okay, so they're just reading this. And the last little bit to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you on the lesson plan. Notice that there is a yellow highlighted pals, a gift, a box, rings and things. These are just supplemental phonetically supported passages that the therapist gives you as an opportunity for something to use during that read 20 minutes. Um, check mark on here. You can, of course, choose to read whatever it is that you want with your child. That can be shared reading also, okay? That can be some kind of assisted reading. Um, any kind of reading is really important. You probably don't want to exclusively just have them uh, just have you read to them. That being said, lots of kids are in different places of their reading. So maybe you pick a word and uh, um, you do a little bit of a, like a pause, like a, what we call close, is you're going ahead, you're reading through the sentence, uh, you read the majority of the sentence, but just so that you make sure your child is following along with your eyes, at one point you leave a word out and they have to give it to you. A word that you feel is going to be something that's going to, that they're going to be able to do is going to build their confidence. Just remember that. So if we're looking over here at those pals, a gift, a box, rings and things, these are just passages that your therapist has um, provided to you as a suggestion. These passages are things that are either at, um, a level that your child is at, or it's following the pattern that was presented in that day's lesson. So for both of those reasons, they're great uh, passages to go ahead and use. So again, I really hope that this has helped. Homework can be a very confusing thing. Finding all of those papers can be confusing. So the combination of using our check chart and the binder organizational system be very helpful. Let me also just mention that if um, you need a, a reminder as to how to do these, Cursive, RAP, and instant words are all provided to you, just some kind of base explanation in that supplemental passage that you got. Again, a lot of this was geared at um, our kiddos who are doing Take Flight because they make up probably at least 80% of this company. But you BLS folks, I'm sure that you have something very, very similar um, to complete and you know following this type of framework is very helpful if you're not receiving um, enough or similar homework from your BLS therapist, please never um, hesitate to communicate with me and I'll make sure and get that set up. Thanks so much.